Hi Kev, welcome back to the channel. I'm doing today to pick up a knife for some field testing. You've got them laid out here on the table. I was wondering if you can give me some idea of the designs and how you came about them and what you started off with to start with and what direction were you going to move with these knives. I started off a number of years back. Uh, I was asked if I'd make a tracker knife and I don't like copying anyone else's work. Um, right. So I basically said no, straight off. Right. But there were a couple of inquiries in a short space of time, and so I started considering the tracker itself, what it was intended for, and would I make it different, or could I make it differently? Was that the Dave Beck design or the Tops design? Can you remember? Or was it just the tracker style in general? I think it was just the tracker style in general. I think it was basically off the back of the uh, Hunted movie. All right. So I don't know which knife was in that, but all I knew it was that they were asking basically for a tracker. It was over the telephone. So, right. um, However, looking at the design, I could see that there were some, what I perceived as advantages to the, to the blade, but I didn't like the whole, the design as a whole, I didn't like it. I felt it was limiting itself if you like with the placement of the hook that's one of the reasons i didn't like it right okay and so i sort of put it to the back burner and uh mulled it over you know off and on over the years doing other bits and pieces um i eventually sort of came back to it um when i designed this the shirley which obviously you've had for, for a period of time right and um this was just it was, the idea of this was it was a small knife in a, in a tracker style to uh, just explore the design really um, and I didn't want to go to the, the extent of making a large knife and so I changed the design on this in the fact that the, the tracker's got a flat section in here and this is actually hooked across you know, both sides if you like right. um, but I was surprised at the performance of this I, I really liked it and you when you got it, you, you know, you, you seem to do really, really well with it. And um, Yeah, I thought it was fantastic for all the small carving tasks. Uh, really, really good as a craft knife and a nice size as a neck knife. I thought it done great for that as well. Really handy. Uh, I was really surprised at how well the design worked for a variety of different tasks. Uh, it was <laughs> quite a surprise to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's an odd looking thing. I mean, you know, I've chatted about it, but I've had, a, I've had one guy come on and said that when he first saw the video of this um, that you were doing, when it came up on his on his feed, if you like, he looked at the initial start of it and he said it looked like some sort of fantasy wizard's dagger or something. <laughs> and uh, I can see where he's coming from with that. But he said that by the end of the video that you've done with this, um, he said he was convinced it was a really useful kind of life. Um, oh, definitely is. And so... That, that was the, the first part, and given, given the success of that, I then thought, well, maybe it's, it's worth, you know, at some point doing some bigger knives. And um, obviously I've been away from grinding and bits and pieces like that for quite some time with a lot of stuff going on. And I've been upgrading machinery in the workshop. Right, okay. And so I've changed the table, I've changed all sorts of bits and pieces in there. Um, and. I wanted to get back to obviously making knives, getting customer orders out, but I didn't want to trash any of those who were working with a new system and maybe not being quite up to par because I hadn't done it for a long time. Right. And so I thought that was an ideal opportunity to get one of my prototypes out the, out the design book, if you like, and, and see what, what I wanted to grind. And so I settled on these because it's a more complex grind. And if I could grind that, then anything simpler is going to be easy effectively and are the changes on these blades uh, the ones that you wanted to do that were different from say the Dave Beck design or the tops design that you didn't like to start with yeah um, I, I looked at the kind of size of the of the tracker knives and they seem to be about two different sizes to my mind I mean there's also custom makers making different things but generally speaking the, the, the Beck's ones and the um, tops and you got the was it AXSB or SXB? Ah, uh, skull crusher. Ah, uh, the skull crusher one. It's massive. And then you've got the uh, um, Brock knives that you've you've tested. Yeah, they've really got good. two different sizes as well. And so 
I decided that I'd explore a new, numerous sort of factors with this, which was basically length of blade, depth of blade, size of the um, recess, if you like, and the shape of the recess. Right. So I wanted to explore how they would perform in different applications, really. The, the, the main issue with the tracker, I'll take this one as, a, as an example. The main issue with the tracker was this, this is about the size of a tracker. Is it? It's about six and a half, seven inches the blade on the tracker, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, thank yeah, so you. Yeah, actually the middle size is actually more like the tracker, but what it is is you've got the hook and it's set quite far forward on, on the on the tracker. On the actual tracker itself, it's about maybe it almost seems to be about halfway up. And I, f I always felt that the, the real estate at the front part of the knife didn't lend to very many tasks because of that. Right. And so the, the first thing I wanted to do was shift this kind of section to the rear of the knife because at the rear you've got more control for, for doing small carving tasks anyway. Um, so that's what I wanted to put there. The other thing was that I obviously removed the, or I didn't put on the, the saw back. Um, I'm just not a fan of that. Well, we've discussed what I think about saws in the backs and knives and we'll do that another time. But what I wanted was a strong tip, um, able to split, and a strong spine, and the, the control and dexterity for um, carving tasks at the back of the knife. And so that's what I did here. Um, and in, into this, I also incorporated the, the, the 10 mil hole or the bow drill socket to allow you for firecraft. And this hole here was designed as a wire bender or stripper or whatever else. That was mm -hmm. the idea. So that was the essence of the design. However, having never done one before, um, I wanted to explore, as I said, the different applications it could be used for. So I made a mid-sized one, which is basically half an inch longer, but it's significantly wider, um, as you can see there. Yep. So it lends itself, it's, it's a heavier blade for more designed for chopping. And then the last one is narrowed down again, but longer again. So the small one is the six inch blade, six and a half, and this is, this is eight. Okay. And so this is obviously designed more for chopping. And again, this one's got the, the straight section here as opposed to curved on the other two knives. And I'm interested to see whether this works better than the curved, um, the curved section there. Yeah. Can I ask you why you decided to go with a Tanto style front? Rather than your drop point? It was for strength. Okay. I wanted a really strong step for, for driving in and splitting uh, splitting timber and levering. I wanted a strong tip. Some of the some of the designs they've got the saw back on it. Right. And the, the last notch, if you like, goes deeper, uh, effectively as a pot lifter or something like that. But it's leaving a very small section of tip that could actually shear off if you stuck it in and twisted it sideways. Or yeah, that was my kind of feeling even though it never happened and I haven't seen it happen but I just it worried me you know uh, especially how hard I can be on my blades um, so yeah I didn't like that either. Uh, yeah. Do you think you've taken the Tanto style from your sear Tanto knife because of the results of that? The sear knife I like that. Um, it's a tough knife. Um, and the, the, the sort of stubby tanto, if you like, you know, it works really, really well for, for driving and splitting things down without taking any damage. And so I guess it's, it's mimicked in these as well, although they're different sizes. Right. I guess a similar thing, yeah. Okay. This is good for whittling, carving, you know, making traps, just food prep. It, it's a nice little knife um, for lighter tasks. I mean, I think you've battened with this. Yeah, uh, yeah. But obviously, you're limited to the size you can batten with a small knife like this. But I think on the whole, it performs very, very well for its size. So yeah, I'd say more craft, craft orientated this one. I found it very good for the bow drill, uh, carving a bow drill set, and then actually with your your socket that you've got, I found it worked really good with that when it was in the sheath. Uh, there was no heat transfer, which I really liked about it. 
and it's very convenient to carry as the neck knife style. Mm. So I like that about it and I found for craft work, yeah, it was really good. Oh, quarter inch thick, they're all six, just over six mil. So they're, they're heavy knives. They're designed to take a bit of the pounding. And yeah, this one, this one cuts feather sticks very, very easily. Um, it's got a bit of weight about it for chopping. Um, although not as much as the mid-size one, which you've done the video and that's, you said that's a chopping monster, but this one's a bit lighter. This will batten really, really well. It's maybe yeah. not got the chopping capability, um, but it, it'll batten well. And again, the bow drill socket is basically just fits in there. And off you go, you can, you can get your bow drill going with it. So, yeah, th this would be, again, bushcrafter, more to the bushcrafter side than the survival side. Okay. Um, so a bit more fire crafty, you know, camp crafty. Not so much the carving and stuff because that covers that. Um, but yeah, that's where that would go. The the mid-size one. That's got a bit more heft about it. And again, that's that's sort of transitioning between bushcraft and into the sort of survival side of things, where you've got a really really tough knife that's able able to take a a lot of abuse uh, and keep on going and again you've got the ability with the hook to create small feather sticks you can batten with this you can split with it you've got your bow drill socket and you've got your your wire bender effectively there the big one again that that's you moving potentially out of bushcraft per se and into the, the sort of survival aspect of things you've got a bigger knife which is capable of being battened through like larger sections of timber and also it's got more of a chopping capability you've got the other the same features as you had before but you've just got more capability in, in splitting with this um, I'm going to be interested to see what your feedback is on this one compared to the, the mid-size one and eventually the wee one when you get it after I've had a play <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking forward to using the larger one uh, as I feel I need something that does a lot of chopping for my shelter building and I think that's definitely going to fit the bill there. You, uh, you just that. like big knives. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think also for firecraft, you know, for splitting down my logs and processing the wood and the fact that I've got a bow drill adapter on the rear of it uh, can do that as well. I'm really looking forward to trying all this out. Well, thanks very much, Kev, for you. taking time out today. I know you're really busy, and uh, it was nice to come down and let people see what you're up to over this period. And I'll catch you all in my next video. Thanks again for coming along to the channel. Please like, share, and subscribe, and watch out for these new videos coming out. Cheers. Cheers.